How was your experience at Berkeley? How important do you think that was to your, to your overall career and recommending that higher levels of education to young drummers out there? For me, it was monumental. Um, I was extremely driven at that age, uh, like to an insane degree. I, I, I was willing to do anything and everything possible uh, to become the best. And uh, yeah, Berkeley had those resources. It had those resources in the students. Um, it had those resources in the facilities and it had those resources in the professors. So if you can really suck the life out of Berkeley, <laughs> like get everything possible out of it and, um, you know, just dedicate your, your life while you're there to, to educating yourself. I think it's, it's worth it. Um, and it was for me. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was already kind of exposed to, to Latin funk jazz, you know, the Afro Cuban stuff and African stuff, uh, before I went to Berkeley, but definitely going there like, and, you know, uh, just commiserating with the other students and, you know, interacting, like I got exposed to even more of that. Uh, and then, you know, you, you say like, oh yeah, man, I love Michelle Camilla that, you know, once more, once record is, that's a sick record. Like, but, and then they're like, oh, but you, have you heard this? You know what I'm saying? And like, you get a little, it's almost like a little competition, but it's like, no, I got this, I got this secret sauce stuff. And like, you know, you just end up getting exposed to a lot of, uh, different music and, um, yeah, it's it's a it can be a challenging environment, but you know, if you're if you're of that mindset, it's it's going to do wonders for you. I think it's going to be with me for the rest of my life. We got an email uh, a couple of years ago uh just to info at drumchannel.com from somebody who said he was studying really hard, taking private lessons, working on Ralph Humphrey's course we have on Drum Channel, Marco Minimum Six Way Independence. So he was somebody that was practicing, probably putting in those woodshed hours like you, wondering if he'd be able to get into Berkeley. And he actually got in with a part scholarship uh, as a result of all the work that he did. But um, excellent. I, it, it turned the light on in my mind. There's a lot of kids out there in high school or younger even that might want to understand what, what does it take to get into a school like that. So I talked to John Ramsey, who was the percussion chair back at the time, and said, what are the requirements to get into Berkeley? I like to tell people so that they can prepare for that. And he said, well, why don't I come out and do a course, which we actually have on the website. So this is like him giving the course as the adjudicator of what we'd be looking for in somebody who were to come on and, and fulfill the requirements. And uh, something we talked about a little earlier, um, I said, what are the main things they fail at? And I would have thought it would have been reading because uh, everybody's kind of got their chops together, but maybe didn't learn how to read. He said, far and away song form, we would get to a point and ask them to play a 12 bar blues and they hadn't had an experience doing that, uh, which is, is like you said, that you know is an important part of your, your learning journey. And, and reading also, to touch on that, uh, and transcribing uh, either parts that you're gonna be reading or transcribing ahead of time. How important is that, you think, in your personal career? I would say pretty important, but... Uh... You know, for me, like I just experimented with so many patterns um, that it would end up helping me get better at transcribing because I think part of like as soon as you learn the paradiddle, you can then spot whenever somebody's playing a paradiddle on the drum set and you're like, oh, that's a paradiddle on the drum set. It's like, yeah, well, now that you know the pattern, you can see it. So the more patterns that you know, the more you can hear and see. And so I think that was um, more like a, a huge stepping stone for me, um, you know, auditorily. But, you know, the, the, the reading thing and transcribing, that's more to me about like more helpful in being able to visualize what you're playing and visualizing the time like in a grid like fashion that's kind of how notation set up it's set up with like you know imaginary bar lines so that 
you know, when you see four 16th notes, you know, one eanda, they're grouped together, two eanda, it's grouped together, and so on. And so you start to uh, form a visual representation of, of sound. And the more and more you do that, uh, the more interlinked sound becomes uh, with notation. So the easier it is to hear something and be like, I know that exactly how that's written. Um, so it's kind of like, a, it's like you should go through all the routes, not just transcribing other players, but like transcribing your own stuff when you're like, what was that that I played? Like when you're not 100% sure, like figure it out. <laughs> um, figure out where you're starting a certain thing and then how many notes are in between where you're ending. Okay, I've got the starting and ending point. Now I need to figure out what's in between and kind of going through that process that, you know, reading and then being like, oh, I have an idea. I think this is a sick idea. I used to do this all the time. I'd be like, oh, I got this five idea that I think is sick. I'd write it down. I had this like blank real. It was like a real book, but it was entirely blank. And I was like, I'm going to put all my, you know, secret drum sauce in this book. And so like I'd get a good idea and I'd, and I'd write it down. And that also that helped me to remember next time I was on the kit, like, okay, what should I be practicing? What do I want to, I want to do my own stuff. I've done the, all the hours and hours of the stuff I've been assigned and hours and hours of other stuff I'm supposed to be working on. Like what, what's my own patterns that I came, Oh, right there. You know? So it's, it's a resource. It's another pathway to, um, yeah, to, to learn new patterns, to read, to, um, to get more acquainted with. So like, you know, don't, <laughs> you, you, don't ignore that. <laughs> Greg Bissonette, uh, is, you know, known for transcribing uh, a lot of different parts when he gets into studio situations. So he kind of makes cheat sheets. So, uh, and I think as you're saying, if you can, reading seems ominous to a lot of students, like that's going to be a really whole other part of my life. And maybe do I need that or don't I, but you don't have to be able to read the black page. You know, if you can read 16th notes, that's going to cover, as Greg Bissonette said, probably 95% of anything you'll ever come up across. Uh, then it's just a matter of learning how to interpret the charts. So it's not, it's something within several months you could almost, you know, get your head around so you could look yeah. at it. And you have transcriptions on your website that people can, can take advantage of. I know of the songs you did. We have a great course on yep. Drum Channel, uh, the State of the Art course, which, uh, we actually have a trailer for which I'm going to take a short break and play for a minute and then I want to come back and talk about you breaking down songs and what you have on your website too. Check this out. I'm Matt Garska and I've recently recorded some lessons at Drum Channel. These lessons feature a duo called Victoria. We not only go over polyrhythms and metric modulations, but we go over how they can function in musical context and how to utilize them in musical composition and arranging. His package was designed to essentially bridge the gap between the technical and the creative side. Learn more at drumchannel.com. First of all, your website, uh, how can people get in touch with you and see the great lessons that you have on there? Uh, just Google Matt Garska and uh, you'll see my website pop up. And uh, yeah, I have a, a variety of different um, a la carte kind of courses, um, you know, anything from single le single pedal lesson to double bass drum lesson to you know universal function which is a coordination course and then i have the mastering time uh series which is all about you know timing and um you know working with click playing odd times odd groupings uh, stickings and you know the the whole shebang and transcriptions uh, also so, transcriptions also yeah 
So ba- basically, it's you know, it's almost like uh, um, you know, me documenting um, my progress too, because like you know, all all the single pedal lesson stuff, like I, I still utilize that stuff. I still work on uh, those patterns. So you know, I'm not giving you guys like, oh, this is just some you know thing that I came up. No, this is my personal. I came up with it for me. <laughs> And then I was like, you know, I I could make a lesson out of this and share this, and I probably should. That's basically what my lessons are. It's still part of your practice routine, is what you're saying, even even today. Uh, yep. Uh, talking yep. about odd time signatures uh, and how you how you think about those. What was the one great animals as leaders track? Was arithmophobia? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, is that it? Yes. Uh, that uh, yep. I remember hearing that years ago, and I looked at it more recently. That, but it, the the cool thing I've used that as examples through the years. Um, you can still tap your foot and not know where you are, but it still had an ongoing pulse. It was almost like if you listen to Elvin Jones on some of those Coltrane tracks, you know, where he's you know playing Love Supreme, playing in three, you're still tapping your foot. And it almost feels like it's in four because it's just a constant pulse. But do you think of something mm. specifically when you're playing? You're not thinking of twos and threes and breaking them up, or how how do you think of the time? It's a process. So, like the process for me of of coming up with it in the first place was kind of like I, I want to play some odd, very odd stickings, um, like pairing an odd with an even, like a five with a six or a seven with a six and i was trying to come up with maybe it it's you know not asymmetrical where it's you know always starts with the right and then you know the sevens with the right and then the sixes with the left seven with the i was like what if it was you know seven with the right six with the left seven with the left six with just playing with stickings like that basically but you know coming from a very technical uh place like that it can be very dry so like i was very conscious like there's gonna be losers in this <laughs> like there's gonna be there's gonna be patterns that i come up with that don't sound the best so let's keep those out and let's pick the the top ones and so i was just playing with this idea for for months on end really and uh yeah ended up coming up with some some stickings behind it it's all in 16th notes it's it's all in 4/4 and the uh, the idea was also to get like you know these crazy groupings like you know you know 7/6 seven, 7/6 six, seven, six, like keep going back and forth and then like you know 5/5/6 five, five, or you know just trying to make these sequences of patterns that matched perfectly in 4/4 four, four was was the point and it ended up being an animal song i like i tracked a bunch of these crazy patterns and um in this little studio and i and i sent it to the guys and i was like and i titled it crazy shit in 4/4 <laughs> and they're like dude that's really in 4/4 what you sent and i'm like yeah it's 16th notes in 4/4 it's just like you know it takes 8 bars to resolve or something and then they're like, I think we should do that. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, that that's that's I guess the head space it started out as. But now, you know, eventually when you learn the pattern um and you know how it sounds, you know how it feels, you're you're no longer thinking about sixes and I, I personally can't remember right now. I can't, I I'm I know it's six fives. And then there's like sevens and sixes at some point, but I could play it right now. I could I could play the whole thing down, um, because now it's just in in my ear brain, if you will. I don't know. You're hearing it, yeah, as opposed to yes. analyzing it. So that's kind of like I think the ultimate, you know, that we're trying to get to as as drummers is like go through all these fives and sevens and then you know one day we're just able to play fives and sevens without thinking i need to play this five i need to play this seven it just comes out you know 
and sitting there in kind of your control room vibe is where we're at now, right? Where you've got the keyboards. Uh, yeah, your kind knowledge. of like my little writing. Yeah, so talk about that a little bit and the importance for young drummers out there to get beyond the drum set, if you will, uh, in terms of making a living in the music business. Well, um, the original reason um, I was like, I realized I needed to play other instruments was was really just as a musician. That's That's what I was told. I was told, hey, like I know you're a drummer, but like you need also need to understand other instruments, and it's going to help you become a better musician. And I said, "Well, if I'm trying to be the best, I guess I have to do that." So, you know, I always kind of dabbled, but you know, then in college, you know, you start actually writing some stuff, and you start writing. You realize you can write your own little loops and stuff to practice to in five four and seven four. And, you know, the addiction has started. Uh, <laughs> um, but yes, I, I, for me, um, I haven't made, I, I guess, like, my, I sell loops on my website, and that's some money that I make from, from composing and composing with animals. But, um, you know, you can make a living just doing drums. Um, but... I think it certainly helps to uh, be a better musician. And, um, you know, if you're good at, you know, playing keys or producing, then that could end up saving your butt one day, uh, <laughs> making a living. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I would say there for me, there's, you know, I would tell drummers there's there's greater importance for, like being an educator too. Um, and, you know, it's not just monetary. It's also like we all need to make sure that we're continuing to move forward in drums. And if we all just decided one day we're going to be selfish and hoard all of our knowledge and we're going to be the best generation, then, you know, we'd be really screwing over the future of drums. So I think, you know, being of that mindset helps us to not only educate for pure purposes, but also like, you know, I, I was told when I was a kid, like, dude, you're going to have to teach. It's going to, it's going to save you one day, you know? Um, and you're going to have to be able to explain what you do too. So that to me was like, okay, I can't just mindlessly go for it. I've got to be able to, pass this on somehow um so i'd say that and um also like for upcoming drummers like being able to you know work a camera you know i've got a camera set up it was a pain in my butt um and i'm lazy now but i did it <laughs> so <laughs> you know you, you got to be able to do that and work the technologies uh to to make your own videos for Instagram, for all this stuff. It's like, you know, it, it, they keep piling on. It's like, oh, you want to be a drummer? Cool. Well, now you, you also got to learn other instruments. Oh, but you also got to learn how to record yourself. Oh, but you also got to learn how to video yourself. Oh, but you, you also got to learn how to work the all the social media. Oh, but you also got to learn. Uh, there's this thing called marketing and you've got to, it's like, it's endless. Um, but... <sighs> I guess it's a necessary evil these days. Uh, you're you're explaining the life of of somebody that's here in the room. <laughs> Antoine Fadavi, who you met a little bit earlier, uh, is shaking his head in in agreement. As are the other two drummers <laughs> here. That is really really important. Uh, he got the gig with uh, King Princess. They opened for the Chili Peppers a couple weekends ago. And awesome. They're going out on tour. And am I right, Antoine? Took all those things put together in order to, yeah. to get his young career going at a, at a young, early 20s age. So um, you hit the nail right on the head. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, 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 I think drummers just have to look at it as part of their arsenal, if you will. Um, learning how to play other percussion instruments, obviously, too. So you could cover anything that would be required in the, in the drum chair, uh, in addition to just sitting behind the, the trap kit. Um, 
animals has certainly uh, continued on through the years, year after year. You can't do a reunion tour because you never stop. So that's kind of like the chili peppers. You just keep doing it. Uh, what's coming yeah. up? And you have a tour coming up also, right? Uh, yes, in October um, and maybe a bit of November. Uh, we'll be playing some shows with uh, Incubus. We'll be playing some shows with Lamb of God. And uh, then we'll be doing some headlining shows as well, all in the U.S. Maybe maybe there's some Canada in there. Um, but as, as far as I recall, it's U.S. Uh, I took a quick look at it before we started. It's You're back on the road. I mean, there's many days where there's only one day between shows. So I started looking at the cities to be sure they had some some reason why you wouldn't be like you know not able to make from one show to the next but there's there's a lot of one one offs in that tour and that's normal for you i guess i know it's normal for managers to set it up that way and how do you travel in tour buses um yeah we're typically on a tour bus um like the so the like the red rock show is like a one off um we're playing red rocks with the uh, with incubus and uh yeah, I think at some point we return to a kind of normal schedule with 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 our stuff where we're headlining. We'll play, you know, six days a week um, on tour. You know, the only time we don't do that is when, you know, there's a vast distance between cities. Um, but yeah, the, typically, you know, like the, when we're playing with Lamb of God, you know, they they ultimately decide what the and their management decides what the schedule is. We, we don't have any say over that. So what's been happening recently with, with yourself? Basically, uh, I have kind of been transitioning, I'd say, uh, um, from like, uh, maybe OCD, like, uh, highly organized, um, militant disciplined person, to a more free, creative, uh, spiritual being. And, uh, <laughs> I, I guess I'm after so many years, like, I guess, you know, my, my natural state is kind of this high anxiety state where, you know, I'm highly motivated, but it, it's also like, I got, I feel like I got to do this. I feel like I got to do this. Um, which is good to be driven, but, um, like it, it's gotten me into some trouble where it really stressed me out and and put me in a bad place where um, I basically realized that like I'm this type of person. I'm not the type of person that just like was like, whatever, man, like, you know, uh, like when the gig comes, I'm highly organized. I've prepared everything for it. You know, it's that's kind of my approach. And um, so I kind of realized in in life uh, I, I need to kind of learn this other more free way of being. And I realized that it's a, a lot of, uh, musicians that I know that are incredible free players, uh, and, and highly expressive. They're those guys. They're the guys that will show up to the gig completely unorganized, but <laughs> Like they also have this, you know, ability to just live in the moment. And that's, it's, it's, I think it's like also perhaps connected with, you know, ADHD where, you know, like part of, they say what is going on with ADHD is that like you have a problem planning for the future. So you don't realize the future and you can't do anything about it. You're procrastinating because you can just stay in the moment until the future is right here. <laughs> and it's like, shoot. I've got to do this thing. And then, you know, you figure it out. Um, so it's not necessarily that I'm trying to become disorganized or like, <laughs> or um, irresponsible, but I, I am trying to sort of free my, my mind and spirit so that um, I'm uh, more welcoming to the unknown and uh, open to it. And uh Yeah. I, I, that, that's kind of like my journey right now is like, you know, and I also feel like I've, I've developed all this facility and, you know, I could basically, I have the ability to basically say anything now. So 
what matters is that I'm saying something of importance. Um, so that can that can be done with intellect, which is usually what I've done is think about things and like, oh, what would be a really cool angle to come at this from? But now I'm just trying to come more from the heart and and from like the ether, if you will, like this this sort of place that um, ideas and things come from where it's unknown to you and it kind of arrives as if it's been uh, beamed down from some other higher place, you know? Um, so that that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> Part of that being maybe less critical of yourself a little bit or just absolutely that's part of it too is is letting go of the critical side of myself because that is you know there's there's um you know there's playing the thing and then there's there's me and if i'm being critical that's just one more thing between me and playing so i'm just trying to like just get that connection as as uh, pure as possible and that, that's part of it is not being so critical of myself and that 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 is also on and off the drums because you know you can like do a number on yourself off of the drums where you know you you're like oh i'm not playing as much i'm not practicing as much you get inside your own head next time i go to sit on the drums man if it's two days from now oh, i'm really gonna suck i'm gonna suck and you tell yourself this and you you just mess with your own head. And like, I've had this problem where I mess with my own head too much. <laughs> so I'm just like trying to let go of this, um, the, uh, maybe this magician archetype. I don't know if you are like familiar with archetypes, but like the magician sure. is typically the one trying to use intellect to figure things out to, yeah. Uh, I've had a lot of discussions on this subject, which is uh, deep with many of our, our, our mutual friends, one being Terry Bozio. And uh, as we said a little bit earlier, as it applies to music, when he sits down, it's let go and let God is the way he expresses it. It's just like it has to flow through you and come out. All those years of preparation is there to prepare you for self. So you, and then carrying that into your personal life from your playing life is kind of the same experience. Uh, it's what's going to happen is going to happen because you are the person you are and you've prepared all your life in order to to be at this point um yeah you look at so you know, what was it let go and let god let go and let god g-o-d yeah. let go and let god it's just like let go if, and whatever's coming through you whatever god is to you it, it just let let that work at that time and let it happen and uh yeah and, uh, absolutely neil neil Peart was couldn't be more prepared his whole thing was like to be prepared he's going to be prepared for he would get to the point to where he would be so comfortable with it because he was so prepared before they go on on tour you know he would run out the drum channel studio here for one month exactly and just go through and get ready for what he's going to go to rehearsal to do when he went up to canada but he would be prepared for that and it, and in talking to him about that at one time, he just said, Don, come out. And he walked me out to his motorcycle that he had driven up that time. And he opened up the bag. He says, anything that could possibly happen to me on the road in a motorcycle, I've got it in here. I've got extras of this. I got water. I got, you know, Band-Aids. I've got just like, I've, I, I don't want to be surprised. I want to be prepared. Uh, and at the yeah. same time, he would let go when he got to the point to where he was there on the stage. He knew, knew what he was going to be doing. Um, think about the people that we know. Uh, Examples being Elvin Jones, Tony. I mean, these are people that uh, I wouldn't say are not organized, but I guess in Elvin's case, I would say he's not too organized. You just you were hoping he did. <laughs> I he, was going to say you were, you were hoping some, he, you were hoping he hold up. Regardless of how organized he was when he got to the gig, you were hoping he got to the gig first. And then you were <laughs> then you were fifty percent home free. But uh, but Tony, I mean, just very you know, to at seventeen years old have the attitude and have the take you know take the position of just i'm going to do whatever i hear good batter and i've heard him in situations with miles when he was young turning the time around and they would all pick up with it but you just you go for it i guess is the thing uh jim keltner who we know jim walks into the room it feels you feel comfortable you hear him play behind the drum set it sounds comfortable you know it's it's that feeling you're emitting 
which I feel from you too. Whatever work you're doing, it seems to be flowing through in a way because you're being comfortable with yourself, confident, you know. You have so much to give. I mean, just the conversation we had here, I saw the guys, the drummers here in the room with me just nodding their head like, oh, yeah, I get it. I see. Oh, I didn't know he did that, you know. Uh, you don't think of the yeah. life's experience that you bring to the world too. Confidence goes a long way. And like, you know, like even players that aren't great, you know, they can, if, when you're in the moment, like you, you have to, you have to be confident. You have to just like, it, it's now or never, like you've done all that you can do. So, you know, you can either get inside your own head about it. And, and I've, I've been the victim of that <laughs> for so long that I realized like, there's, there's no point in doing that. Like, you know, it's not helpful. You just carry on, you know? Yeah. There's growing, growing up, uh, when studio work was so prevalent amongst drummers, it was called the red light syndrome. Some drummers just like when the red light went on in the studio and they were recording, it was just like, a total different experience than when they were just playing without that. And, then, and you're just simply in your head. Some people like Jim, like other great drummers, it's just like they didn't even notice the light went on. They said, this is what I do. I'm going to let it work. Uh, you're here because you want to hear what I'm doing. But And that had to do with stress as much as anything. You know, How do you deal with yeah. something not be a stressful situation? Uh, be exposed to it more is actually a, a really good way to get yourself kind of lower on that stress spectrum um if you're like like that that helped me um and like i still kind of have that every tour when i when i start the tour the first couple shows i'm nervous um but it, no matter how much i've practiced it's just it's going to be there like I don't drink as much coffee those days because I'm like I gotta watch out for this, but like three days in, four days in, then it's like you know it's pretty much smooth sailing. Um, so yeah, I would say if you're that type, you know, there's the there's the effort guys who just <laughs> they have like a certain amount of effort in their system that like you know uh that i'm envious of but they also got to worry about okay i have so much effort in my system that they they struggle with practicing ahead of time preparing for things they struggle with buckling down and learning the inside out and tiny little details i don't care just move on that's their, their kind of attitude they just they keep things flowing and like that can it can be very powerful but that's their Achilles heel, you know? And then guys like me, you know, I've had some students like this too, who have, who have really helped to manage their anxiety. Cause I'm like, you're like me, <laughs> you're high anxiety. You prepare like crazy. And then like these things happen to you where you're still super nervous or blah, blah, blah. Like, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, I'm, I'm trying to cross over, you know, I think there's, I think there's, there's good and bad to both. And I think if, if I could like somehow figure out how to cross the chasm, you know, I'm doing it right now and I, and I'm feeling benefits from it. And I'm like, this is freaking awesome. But if I can cross over and be like, you know, kind of master of like wax on wax off sort of deal, I wax on when I need to and be high anxiety and prepare stuff. But now I'm able to be in the moment and be, completely present like oh that would that would be mastery <laughs> you're on the journey i can tell uh, yeah jim kellner said something very wise we had a round table with uh don perry and neil Peart about drummers that compose actually was the topic of it uh, and there was a group of students that were in the studio at the same time and as the subject came on uh he said to them you know I never am going to be able to play like you, and you're not going to be able to play like me. I'm my person. I'm going to play the way I play. You're going to play the way you play. And there's no good or bad to it. You just have to be yourself. And that's what people are going to want to hear you do. That's why they're going to want to hang out and be with you, because they're going to want to get to know you better. Uh, and uh, you sharing you know, these insights about your life and 
journeys you go through musically and journeys you go through personally. That's a big part of uh, what we hope, you know, Drum Channel does and your lessons do on your website. It, it makes somebody feel better about themselves while at the same time they're learning how to play drums a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. So, can't thank you enough for the time today and uh, watch out on tour coming up and you'll see Matt uh, and let's keep in touch and on both journeys that you're going through. Let's get together and see, see how the tour went when you get through and uh, maybe come out here and we'll set up Barney with Terry Bozio and have you get together and jam with him. I think that would be fantastic. Yeah. That'd be awesome. He's actually uh, the reason why I have a little bit of a coffee addiction now. Okay. Um, because <laughs> when, when I first dr visited Drum Channel, uh, you guys had Terry Bozio's coffee machine there. I'm like, what yeah. is this thing? You guys are like, oh, Ter Terry, you know, he he practices here. He brought his coffee machine. And, and I was like, hmm. And I took a picture and I was like, oh, man, I want one. I ended up getting one and then from there it's like oh well now i'm gonna get into like pour over and v60 and chemex and then i started oh i'm gonna get an espresso machine and you know now i got a new espresso machine and i'm just like it's he sent me on a journey un, i think unknowingly but yeah cheers all the Terry. things <laughs> things you can learn here at drum channel that you didn't need, ways you can help people you didn't even know I yeah. got one of those coffee machines for the house, by the way, and it was there for about two months. And Bonnie said, just get this out of here because all you have to do is push a button and you get really strong coffee and you can do that all day long if you want. So <laughs> there's the danger zone too, but... Uh, too much power for one man. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much, Matt. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me I know so you got much. a busy schedule. Yeah, I look forward to getting together and seeing you in person next time when we do this. Yeah, that would be awesome. It'd be an honor. Thank you for watching us today, too. Check us out next week on Tuesday at 5 on Lombardi Live. Matt, again, thank you. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Don.